Hey kittens, it's PC Purrs and I'm back for another episode of A Dancer Reviews where a dancer and me is going to review a show or a music video, whatever, that has something to do with pole and we'll talk about how pole is in it, not just the storyline. So today we're back for another episode of Jocelyn's Cabaret Las Vegas. This is episode six, I think. So let's talk about it. So this episode starts with Jocelyn talking to Ballistic about the fight between Kay Capri and Wet Wet. And she's saying, she's calling Wet Wet Dragon Breath and saying that her breath alone should have cleared out the house and whatever, just going in and talking about Wet Wet and the fight. And then she basically says the girls are just out of control. And so she thinks that they need a break from all the stress. So she's going to throw them a pool party. How do they need a break from the cabaret? When have they been cabareting? I ain't seen no cabareting. We saw the one little static, no, what's it called? We saw the one little stage pole, I think it's downstairs, and my head is downstairs, that the girls can practice on. We ain't seen nan rehearsal. We ain't seen nan choreography. We ain't seen none of that happening. So what do they need a break from? I think they're really just bored. They need an activity. They need some choreography. We also find out that the cabaret is going to be a three night thing. So, I mean, I don't know why I was thinking more like a residency, like she was going to post up and be there for a while, but I guess not. So then Riri, Jordan, Raven, Kay Capri, and Black Diamond are sitting on the couch just talking about the fight with Wet Wet and what happened. And Kay Capri admits that she was upset, but she said Wet Wet does too much and she thinks that she doesn't belong there. And Black Diamond and Raven are saying how when Kay Capri called them up there first that they weren't ready. And I'm like, how y'all not ready? Y'all are here on this show competing to dance. So what you mean you're not ready? You're supposed to get up on the stage and do whatever you can do. Like, it seems pretty loose with like the expectations around here. So just get up and give it your all. Like, and shout out to somebody that asked me what I thought about Riri and Jordan. And I'm like, they really don't do much. They're just quite, they're just there. They're just there. I don't think they want any smoke, but I do feel like Riri looks like she likes to party. Every time I look at her, I always feel like she's a little bit drunk. Like she just always looks like just a little bit. You know what I mean? So they're talking and Kay Capri is saying that she was upset, but that Wet Wet does the most and she wants her gone. And then in the midst of the conversation, Black Diamond says to Kay Capri, Lollipop relayed the message that Kay Capri said that Black Diamond and Raven are cute, but can't dance. So Kay Capri gets upset and she's denying it. And Black Diamond said that she asked Amber and Amber confirmed it or something like that. So then Kay Capri wants Amber to say it to her face. And Kay Capri is asking in her confessional why Lollipop has so much to say, why she didn't come get her. And I'm like, Y'all need something to do because you can't tell me Kay Capri didn't say something to that effect. You know how I know? Because they couldn't dance. And Amber is the one that said they up there dancing like strippers and it just seen Drake or whatever. So it's like, girl, none of y'all need to be talking about any of this. And if somebody said that you can't dance, like what? You mad? That's what you want to be mad over? Girl, like, these girls are way too pressed about things that are important in my opinion. So after that, Jocelyn gets all the girls together and she tells them about the pool party and tells them it's gonna be a chance for them to calm down and cool off and to just have fun, yada, yada, yada. And I will say this house is very, very nice. And they show us like the pool area, the outside of the house, and then they take us inside to some of the rooms and then they take us to Chanel and Lexi Blow's room. And that room looks so empty. I'm like, what? And they had these little racks they're just like putting clothes up, kind of hanging them up, kind of just shifting hangers around, talking. And Chanel is congratulating Lexi Blow and saying that she's proud of her. And, she, <laughs> and Lexi Blow was like, are you? <laughs> I'm like, yo, she's so shady to Chanel. I don't know why she don't like Chanel, why they can't just be on the same team. Like they're supposed to be the cabaret captains, but they are not united. She's like, no, I'm genuinely happy for you. And then Lollipop comes in. And she's like, yo, what's going on? And what's up with Wet Wet? She's not here because she had to leave for like her mental sanity in the last episode, like understandably. 
And she's like, let's call her. Let's see how she is. So the three of them get on the phone and they call Wet Wet. And Wet Wet is saying, you know, I didn't feel any type of way about it. I felt like they were checking up on me. And I think it's nice that somebody should have called that girl because she got into a fight with four people back to back. And that that was a lot. I'm sure that would be a lot for anybody. Pool party. So then at the pool party, it looked like it was very much so giving me Sukihana because he had everywhere vibes because it just looked like a bunch of girls that were naked, twerking, rubbing on each other, sucking on each other, fondling each other, twerking on each other, doing the most, topless, just all the things, right? Well, not all the things, but a lot of the things. And just drinking, Ballistic's the only guy there. I'm sure he was having a good time just passing out the drinks. While the girls are having a good time partying and doing the most, Amber is back and forth in the kitchen with Henny. She's got her as her assistant and they're cooking. And I mean, I'll say when they showed the cutaway, the food did look good. And the girls at the pool party, the ones that ate it, said it tasted good. So, all right, I guess we can give that to her. Her attitude just makes me feel like maybe your food is sour. I don't know. But <laughs> I feel like if you're going to be cooking for people, maybe you should be happy. But that's unrealistic because in restaurants, chefs aren't known for being happy people. So. So then we have a little meeting inside and Jocelyn is sitting down and <laughs> Black Diamond and Raven come to tell her about the mess that's going on with K Capri and Amber and Lollipop. And Jocelyn is saying, you know, well, in terms of them saying that you couldn't dance, I did think that y'all were going to do better. And maybe because y'all are so used to dancing together at the strip club that maybe y'all should... Um, like venture out and, and deal with other people and not be so stuck up under each other because y'all need to like be able to stand on your own. And so then she's questioning why Amber went and relayed information. So they call Amber in. Amber is mad from jump. She's just, as soon as she comes in, she's ready to fight. Also, Amber is tall as hell. I did not think she was that tall. She looked like she's a little bit taller than Jocelyn. And the other two look tiny. I was like, oh, wow. So like I said, Amber comes in loud, angry, deflecting. They're trying to find out why she's running her mouth. And she turns it into, that's why you broke. That's why you ain't got this. That's why your credit cards are maxed out. You living off credit. You doing this, you doing that. And the whole time I'm just sitting there thinking, why does this woman know all your business? Because Raven is like, it's not my credit card that's maxed out. It's my debit card. And, it's, and she knew the amount. Why does she know that the other one account was in the negative like y'all just met each other and you telling all your personal business like this they set themselves up for it and then after they had all this mouth to jocelyn now they're sitting there quiet and regardless of whether or not i think amber does the most she's sitting there reading y'all and y'all really can't say anything and then she called them weak then she stood up and flexed on them she's standing in front of them like what i'll hold my arms and let y'all y'all go ahead and swing on me because raven not raven because Black Diamond is in an arm sling from her little tussle with Gaia. So she's like, listen, between the two of y'all, y'all got three arms and I'm going to hold my arms. What you going to do? And they didn't swing. And I'm like, then Black Diamond is just throwing the N word around. And like, I, I have Zeus, right? I look at the comments. People are like, oh, no, 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 no. General consensus is like, why is she throwing this word around? Y'all let me know how you feel about it. Like, drop down, right? Let me know how you feel about Black Diamond and just tossing that word around and nobody checking her, nobody saying anything to her about it during Black History Month. To me, if I was the two little twins right here and you talking about me crazy like that and you step up on me like that and this is the show we already fighting and this is what we do and they were already fighting y'all might as well fight her for having this much mouth and, and talking to y'all like that i'm not one to, to i'm not saying that people need to fight i'm just saying sometimes i'm not saying nothing i'm not saying nothing but then if i was amber you're not gonna stand here in my face and throw that word around and think i'm gonna be cool with it and not say anything to you so both sides had a reason to I'm not saying they should have. That's not what I'm saying. I didn't say that. Did I say that? I didn't say that. I'm just saying. But I didn't say that. Also, Black Diamond is like, listen, none of us have that much money. That's why we're all here. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. And then Amber is like, yeah, you're right, you're right. And I'm just like, how are you sitting here calling them broke? But like, just last week, we saw your wig sitting back here. And so speaking of that, I'm going to leave a link for y'all. <laughs> 
because last season I had to make a review for y'all for dancers on how to keep your wig on your head because it is not you can't you can't be a stripper and then just get off set get off your stage set or finish dancing with somebody or just be in a club and your wig is pushed back to here like you either need a bang or you need to secure it down anyway there's some tips and tricks I'm gonna post that go check that out if you need help with that or if you just want to see <laughs> what that was about but I'm like yeah Amber like you you just people that live in glass houses so then K Capri comes and they're talking about what she said and then they're arguing over semantics she's like oh well i was you said that a fly on the wall told you and she really said a little birdie told me they argue over that semantics so then lollipop comes okay so lollipop what did you say i didn't say that she said you can't dance i said that you guys dance like strippers again semantics because what does that imply that you guys don't know how to dance which is what the truth then it's just more of an amber deflected. She tells uh, Black Diamond and Raven that all they know how to do is suck an F. And then she storms off, not answering ever why she wouldn't relay the message. And then Kay Capri flutters off saying that she wants to go get some snow crab legs. So she goes off in the direction of Amber, I guess. And she gets to evade the question of why are you over here talking about us? So they just make themselves disappear. And Jocelyn is left with the two girls and they're like, whatever, nothing to say now, they're quiet. And Raven is like, I'm not eating that food. And Jocelyn is like, I ain't eating it either. And I'm like, see? So then Jocelyn has all the girls together and she's telling them that the ones that are going to perform with her tomorrow get her glam team. And <laughs> so they better look nice because otherwise they won't get a chance to dance. And that the other girls have another chance to dance two more times because it's a three night thing. And I'm just like, y'all are doing this very much. It's giving me P-Valley last dance. We're trying to save the club. Like we're going to do this three night special. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, yeah, that's what we get. And then in the very end, Wet Wet comes back with this orange wig on and just looking like She's been through some things and Jocelyn has some jokes on it, but she tells her she wants to stay and fight for a chance in the cabaret that she can and she lets her back in. And then we see next week, we see the girls dance and, and there's no choreography. They're just up there just doing whatever. So, I mean, this is interesting, but um, yeah. So today was hard because there was no dancing once again. But I was inspired by Raven and Black Diamond because they dance together. So in the club, sometimes girls that are friends or girls that meet each other, that can kind of vibe together, will pair up or link up and they'll work together. So they'll pull in customers together, they'll dance together on the stage, do tricks together. And it's, it's a good thing to do because you can potentially make more money that way because there's two of you, you can entertain more people. Also, you can put on sometimes a bigger show. But today, what we're gonna talk about is if you have a partner, strengthening exercises that you can do or tricks that you can do, um, the value of working with somebody that might be more experienced than you or even somebody that's less experienced than you. There's always something to learn. And I'm gonna show you some real life examples from my life. And I have permission from my friends to show you guys. My friends that have allowed me to use this footage are not strippers. One is a teacher and she has been my instructor before. And the other is my friend. She was also my student before. So it always kind of comes full circle, which is nice. Okay, so here's just some footage of me going through training with a friend of mine. And she's also an instructor. She's a lot more advanced than me. But after our initial warm up, what we would do are these scissor climbs, which are good for activating a lot of the muscles in your body. And you go from an outside to an inside leg hang. And you can do it from a bicep grip or a trap mount. Here we went through the progressions from a bicep grip. And then after that, that day we were talking about leg switches, which neither one of us do very much. So... I'm just practicing them, going through it very slowly. Uh, not the greatest form here. I'm still learning, but, and she was watching from the side. And then bringing out the crash mats. And crash mats are there to soften the blow if you fall. So if you're learning something new, it's good to learn with the crash mat. This particular one comes in two pieces and at the bottom there's Velcro. So you connect them and then they snap together. And in the center is a hole for the pole. 
So you just place that down. They come in a few thicknesses. So I like the thicker ones. They make me feel more safe. All right, so here my friend is going to demonstrate something for me, something that she initially thought she couldn't do and would need a spot for. But as you'll see, she doesn't need a spot. So she went through a trap mount. She inverted. She's going to push away. Here's where she thought she needed the spot, but she really doesn't need my help. But I'm not going to stand too far away just in case she needs me. And then she opens up into an iron X, which I cannot do, but she did really well. So next, she's going to help me try to start that that uh, invert. So you're going to see her come toward me just to spot me just in case. And this is why it's good to take classes so that you can learn new things with somebody who's qualified to help you. My friend is an instructor, so she's actually qualified to help me through this. But even if you just have a, a dance partner that isn't necessarily an instructor, as long as they know what they're doing and can kind of help you with it, it's good to, to train together. But I especially suggest a, a professional setting. Then here you're going to see her coach me through a leg switch with like a, a spin in it. So she's telling me what to do, and you're going to see why you need the crash mat. Because even though I can make it, it's not a smooth transition. I'm still learning, and you're going to see when I come around, whoop, down to the ground. It was a soft landing, but that crash mat definitely helps, and knowing that it's there makes you feel a lot more safe. Here we're just goofing off, practicing our hand twerks, and just going through some different twerk positions. Uh, this is another one from a elbow handstand. I like elbow handstands. I'm not the greatest at handstands yet. So these, again, make me feel safe. A little twerk. It's a split. Here we go. Some more split type things that you can twerk out of. And remember, always keep moving. So slid out of that a little faster than I thought. But ah, keep going. And again, one more little twerk. Hey, <laughs> and then here is actually a party at our school that uh, I think it was like our closing party. And on the right, you see my friend that I trained with. And on the left, you see my friend who was also my student. And so you see it, it just brings another element to it when there are more than one person on the pole. So shout out to my friends for allowing me to use these video clips. It was so much fun doing those things with them and I just love them so much. And hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you see the value in working with somebody else or having a gym buddy, pole buddy, somebody to hold you accountable for learning new things, somebody to help you and just encourage you along your pole journey, or somebody to help you make more money if that's what y'all are doing. And um, if you have any other tips or tricks, or if you wanna see other examples of me doing doubles work, because I've got plenty of examples of that, uh, drop down, let me know anything else you want to know, any other comments, put them down below. Let me know what you guys are thinking of the series so far and check out my socials and I'll see you for the next one.